For more now, we turn to founder and president of Investors Advantage Corporation, John Grace joins us. Hello, John. Hello, Steve, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Okay, so the Wall Street Journal calls 5G the center of the technological arms race between the U.S. and China. So how important is the 50-city 5G rollout that's currently taking place in China? Well, Steve, this is genuinely huge. I mean, there is, uh, maybe their greed is good, but certainly we can all agree that competition is terrific. And China is ahead, as Sarah really covered very well. Uh, and this is going to have a lot of applications. I mean, can you imagine uh, your mom or your dad has a pacemaker, and the pacemaker is uh, uh, attached to the Internet, so there's always a way to see what's going on there, driverless cars. Uh, it'll have access to, or, or, you know, methodologies with weaponry and manufacturing, uh, helping with, uh, with technology, uh, with uh, all kinds of ways that this thing will, will impact us. This is absolutely the way of the future. All right. So, so the United States and South Korea, they're already offering 5G, but it's on a limited basis. And, uh, you know, and I think until Apple steps up, at least here, it's going to continue to be that way. Currently, there are said to be 75,000 base stations in South Korea, 10,000 here. But by year's end, China is expected to have 130,000 with an estimated 120 million subscribers uh, by the end of uh, 2020. So what does that mean for the economics of China and the economics here uh, for the U.S.? Advantage China, and that's just within the countries that you identified. As Sarah talked about, uh, they've already gone ahead and, uh, and worked with other countries that aren't afraid to, to do business with them. And so, again, they're ahead of the curve. So uh, they really want this. And you can see, uh, what are they investing? Something like uh, 502 uh, billion yuan uh, or 43 billion U.S. dollars. So they're here in a big way. And I say they, they want to take all the marbles off the table. Yeah, no, and, and, they, and they have a, a head start, apparently. Uh, how does Huawei play into the 5G scene uh, with the restrictions placed on them uh, by the United States? But then you have countries like Great Britain that are open, oh, you know, they're, they're saying, come on in, Huawei. We don't care what the United States wants. Be, be our partner in, in 5G. So, so how is Huawei, who's a, a, a big maker of the technology for 5G, how, how are they affected and how do they play into this? Well, they said they certainly wanted to do business with uh, the U.S. They're the largest market. We probably are the second largest market. But uh, certainly they had some headwinds that they had to deal with, and they still have to deal with. And, and they made it very clear back in July that we're going to make other arrangements. So uh, they're not, uh, I don't think, adversely affected, really, in terms of the exposure and the expansion. All right. Now, let me ask you about, you, you mentioned some of these, the economic possibilities, what we might see enhanced technology for driverless cars. There are some driverless cars now, but this will uh, help uh, in that effort. Robot-run factories, I'm not sure how much I like that, but nonetheless, and as you mentioned, internet-connected pacemakers and probably uh, many other uh, innovations in the medical field. So, I mean, this is, this is really a big deal because, you know, the average person, you know, to me, before I looked into this, 4G, 5G, I mean, I'm fine with 4G, but this 5G, uh, opens up, you know, really unlimited, uh, unlimited possibilities, and it's it's like like a hundred times faster than 4G. I mean, it's, exactly. it's significant, right? Right. I think you'd notice that difference, right? But it allows uh, exposure to like more games and uh, you know video games, uh, online games, virtual reality capabilities, which we don't really uh, see at this particular time. That's just around the corner. So yeah, they want in. As I say, they're they're here to play and they're here to stay. Well, and uh, I think they've got a, a big leg up. Well, why are the three in, uh, nationally owned Chinese telecom companies so far ahead of, let's say, Apple? Why hasn't Apple, for instance? Uh, been more proactive, and why aren't they out there already? Well, remember, the Chinese firms are government-really-operated firms. So these are, these are the Chinese tax dollars at work. We, we don't have an agenda like that. So the firms are really out to uh, fend for themselves and try to figure out what to do in this particular Yeah, but we're capacity. talking about, with all due respect, we're talking about Apple. I mean, they got more money almost than the U.S. government. If they wanted to develop 5G, I mean, there's nothing stopping them. You wouldn't think so, but I, I'm not sure if uh, having that leverage as far as the home office, if you will, being behind you, the government being the ones who really want this to be up and running, might be more powerful than even Apple. All right, listen, appreciate your expertise. Uh, nice talking to you. Very interesting topic. Thank you. 
it's hard to clear through the debris and get right down to the nitty gritty that is real news. New details are coming to light in the case of Jeffrey Epstein. As more read between the two year treasury yield and the 10 year treasury yield. Several hundred students are staging a sit in. The Amazon rainforest and the blame game is underway. It's time for Archie America. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button.